Johanna, I'm going to ask you to sort of start about managing the trifluridine tiprosyl TAS-102. Um, the, the schedule, the dose, it's a little complicated. The side effects, how are you, how are you doing it? Yeah. So we talked about oral treatments. And, and I think one of the biggest things that I talk to my patients about is just because these are pills mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they can't be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of patients think, oh, I'm taking a pill. They think it's like a multivitamin. And so I've seen people miss dose a lot and so there's a lot of education that goes when you're trusting the patient to take these certain pills. So one of the things that I try to do for um, my uh, TAS 102 patients is I say Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, two weeks off. Because mm -hmm. I think it's easier for them to remember Monday through Friday than trying to count out five days and two days. For some patients they want to start on a different day and I said mark it on your calendar. So we talk a lot about treatment calendars. What we see with TAS-102 is, and as Tony alluded to, mostly neutropenia um, as the biggest side effect. And in fact, there's been data published that suggests that the more neutropenia that you have or treatment delays due to neutropenia, the better you're going to do hmm. on the TAS-102, which is ironic. That doesn't say take more. Hmm. Um, but what I do is oftentimes, and I think for a good chunk of the patients, maybe 20, 25%, I end up delaying it. It becomes, instead of a four-week cycle, a five-week cycle. So I tend to just give them a little extra time off um, rather, than do, no, rather than dose reduce and try to keep them more at full dose. I don't use a lot of growth factor in my practice. Is this a place you think about it? You know, I've seen people do it. Mm. Um, it it's sort of the timing is right to do it. Um, have I done it before? Uh, a couple of times where people really fell low and, and it was more than a one on week a yeah, uh, delay. And then do you do anything funky with the two pill sizes? The, you know, now you've got this oh. five day on, two day off and Two pill sizes, what do you do? I never use both pill sizes. I round, I do the same thing with Cape Cytobine. I think it's too confusing yeah. to patients to tri figure out how many of these pills do I take versus how many of those pills do I take. Um, and I, you guys are gonna get mad at me, <laughs> but um, you know, I, 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 you all know, I, I tend to believe VEGF inhibition is a good thing. And when I give this drug, I try to keep the BEV going. Anybody else with me? Well, I think if you're using, if you, if, of course, if you're using regorafenib, you probably I've are solved, continuing yeah. the veg, the anti-vegf. Um, I, I think I've actually evolved to believe that as well. I do think there's, a, in many patients, there's an apparent rebound from the discontinuation of BEV. We see that, after all, in the TML study, which was pretty clear, not a huge difference in outcome, but clearly earlier line. And so I, I actually do agree with you. You were the last one I thought would well, agree with and, you. And, and, <laughs> and I think, and the truth is that I, I, uh, many folks in the community do it, and I, I do, I've come to believe that, in fact, it may be a difference maker for some patients. So and of course, we're going to get more data, right? These drugs correct. are even earlier in combination. Well, I'm going to be done. the point of disagreement, there you though. Go. I want that. I need, we need no, that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think that we do have uh, earlier data with 5-FU and BEV in a third line. Uh, which essentially seemed to add very little benefit. But so, to or be none. fair, not randomized discontinuation, understood. right? So it's understood. not against a placebo. Uh, understood, but I, 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 I'm, when I look at even BEV beyond progression, when you get to the second line, you lose significant benefit uh, already. So I'm not sure that I would venture down that way with uh, minimal data. I, I can't say that it's wrong. I just uh, uh, think that uh, I wouldn't use it in clinic uh, before I see more data convincing data. I, I, every time I think about it and do it, I'm, I'm hearing both sides <laughs> of this argument. And there are times when I, you know, if that patient's been long-termer and very quiet disease, and I'm, I might do it, whereas that patient's, you know, I might not. Well, so. and if you, if you think about it as the patient, the patient's saying, if it ain't broke, don't mm. fix it. Mm. And I, I do think that that as we get older and perhaps we have our own infirmities or we deal with these things, you realize that there's a logic to that. And, and I do think patients having some say or be feeling like, I think that's important within reason. 